Today's discussion will be presented in three sections. Since we're recording this session for a radio broadcast on Federal News Radio at 1500 AM. Feel free to post questions and comments during the session and we'll try to get them answered online. We are particularly pleased to welcome our moderator, Tom Timmon, the host of Federal Drive on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. Let me turn over the reins to Tom to begin today's discussion. Welcome. Our guests today are Joanne Wojtek. She is the program manager for NASA Soup. Steve Charles is the co-founder and executive vice president of the IMIX Group. Joe Paiva is the chief information officer at the International Trade Administration. And Tony Celesti, the director at Brocade Federal. It's great to have you all here. And I want to start with the theme of this panel discussion, innovation and tech superiority through acquisition reform. And I guess we ought to establish what the relationship is, and is there one, between the idea of tech superiority, which is things and processes and technology, and acquisition reform, which is the federal process to get there. Uh, Tony, what's your feeling on the connection between those two? Clearly, we're, our dependency on information technology is increasing exponentially and it's becoming a critical part of all of our infrastructure and we're dependent upon it in a lot of ways in our systems. So when we look at uh, acquisition, IT acquisition today, um, it, it's very specific and it's really important that we look at to things like open industry standards, the life cycle, uh, in the in the time frames that it's going to be made available, uh, and what those expectations are to deliver real world outcomes against the agency's mission. All right, and Steve, is there something in acquisition as it's often practiced that may be standing in the way of real good technology innovation? Well, I'm not sure if there's anything really standing in the way. I'm often surprised by how 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 many rules exist that are not followed. And, and what springs to mind is Tony talks about um, ever-shortening product life cycles, rapid adoption of new technology, thinking ahead about what's next. The two words that come to mind for me are market research, FAR Part 10. Go out and see what's available. See what's coming before you define your requirements. And I think so many times our customers are not doing that exploratory phase understanding what's really coming before they put pen to paper and decide what, they re what their requirements really are. I think market research would inform better requirements writing. All right, so sometimes people maybe default to what's easy because they know it'll do something, and market research is hard, I guess, to do well. Yes, no, Tony? Yeah, uh, you know, just, just two comments or two points there that, that uh, I think echo uh, Steve's. Uh, points, and that is we see uh, the frequent use of brand name in acquisitions and over-prescriptive requirements that aren't directly related to the agency's mission or need. And, and so that's a real challenge in IT acquisitions today, and, and it affects the life cycle and the, the return on investment that uh, we're getting for our tax dollars. All right, Joe, I want to go to you now as a CIO at a federal agency that is uh, trying to be innovative in uh, the processes and what you offer the public and so forth. Uh, what do you see as the connection between the way you go about acquisitions and the idea of innovation? Well, I think innovation, I would echo the two comments earlier. It's about following the rules in place, which actually require market research. And I think innovation has to come from commercial industry. So the FAR is very clear in where it says you should do market research. And where a commercial service provider, a commercial product or service exists, you should let the market play out and, and use full and open competition. I think what happens all too often is people go into these things with this concept that somehow their organization, their federal organization, is a world-class networking organization or world-class IT organization. We don't need federal organizations, any federal agency, to be a world-class IT organization. What we need is federal agencies to be world-class at their mission and allow commercial industry to be the world-class delivery resource for IT services. So it's essentially just getting the government out of IT, which means putting out solicitations that say, provide me a network, and not putting out a solicitation that says, provide me 15 routers with the following specifications. And so how do you do market research based on that mission viewpoint? 
So I actually just spend a lot of time talking to vendors and private companies. Uh, I will go up to New York and I'll meet with fellow CIOs of commercial companies. I'll go around here and I'll meet with commercial CIOs. I spend a lot of time, and I came from that side, so it's a little easier for me, but I spend a lot of time looking at what private industry is doing. I spend a lot of time talking to vendors. I, I think there is a way to deal with vendors that's completely above board, completely honest, and strategic in nature that allows you to better understand what their long-term plans are, what their strategies are, and really understand the market. I think that a good federal CIO should act a lot like a good venture capitalist or investment banker. They're trying to look over the horizon and say, if I'm going to make a strategic investment, what do I want to make a strategic investment in? And I think all too often we have people doing kind of ROI you know, analysis of some rather kind of short-term plays based on what they already have as opposed to where they want to be. So you win the Mythbusters decoder ring <laughs> in talking to industry in that way, I guess, ahead of time. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you have to to believe that a federal agency, any federal agency, whether they have a thousand or eight thousand or twenty thousand IT people, somehow know more about any particular thing. They don't know more about networking than Verizon or Sprint. They don't know more about hosting than Amazon or Microsoft. They don't know more about building applications than Salesforce or Oracle. So the idea that they would somehow consider themselves world-class in these areas and know what the future holds is just insane. It doesn't, it doesn't pass the sniff test. All right, and Joanne, as the program manager of many years standing for the generations of soup and the generations of products offered there, you're kind of in between industry and federal government requirements. And so what do you see as the best practices for getting to that idea of tech superiority through acquisition? So, um, so first of all, the word innovation and reform are overused and um, and used in many different ways. And um, much much like has been mentioned already, um, we already have rules in place and, and ways to do things. And and unfortunately, we just keep getting more and more rules that that I think muddy the water rather than make it easier. And so, under the guise of innovation and reform. Um, I think we need to look at what we already have in place and, and make best, better use of it. We have good contracts out there. We have GSA. We have the GWACs. Um, agencies have some of their own contracts. There are ways to get to what you want. What, what, what I would say in terms of innovation and acquisition and not being able to get what you want, um, as we go out and talk to some of these agencies, it's amazing how they're still six months to get a, a, a laptop. Uh, because their internal processes have nothing to do with federal, you know, the, the federal acquisition regulations has nothing to do with what Congress or anybody else can do. It's just their policies make them take six months to do something, and that's that that's going to keep you from keeping up with technology when it's it's changing in six, every six months. And as the orders go through soup, do your people see the re real requirement, or do they just see I want X Y Z product from this or that company? So we're, we've, we've changed in, in, in regard to that and in regard to looking at, at how to help the CIOs of the world. And um, we've recently changed our focus um, in the past year or so. And that's why I'm seeing more of these six-month issues. We're working more with CIOs and saying, how can we help you get your acquisition done faster? And so, so we are seeing more of, of their requirements um, so we can help them build a, a plan that will get them once they've made all their approval. They still have to go through that six-month approval process. We can't help with that. But we want to make it easy for them once they've got into that, that approval to get to the, the products. All right. So we've got processes. We've got requirements. We have people's habits. And then we have the FAR, which is a very big document, which allows a lot of leeway. And uh, what you want to do is probably in the FAR if only people would follow it. Let's try to get an idea of what the 2B state, what would an ideal state look like in which the federal government conducted procurements and requirements planning in such a way as to keep furthering the mission with that technology backing in behind it, as, as Joe described. Joe, why don't we start with you? So I believe, and obviously it's my thing, so the I way believe you're doing in it, it now. right? But, but, <laughs> but I believe that we're on track to, to build the future state that every federal agency should have, which is we're outsourcing printing as printing as a service. We're outsourcing networking to one of the big network providers as network as a service. We're outsourcing, within nine months, the ITA will not own a server. We will not own a switch. We will not own a router. We will not own a firewall. We will not own any of those things. We will not operate and maintain any of those things. And, th and that's a very critical piece of the future, right? The future says 
that you go to Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, whomever, and you say, these are my locations, these are the number of users I have there, I don't care whether you do it with fourth generation LTE, you know, wires in the wall, fiber, copper, cable, your problem, just make sure that these devices all have internet access. And you go, to the, you go whether it's HP or Xerox or FedEx Kinkos, I have this many people that need to print, it's about this many pages, I want a price per black and white page, double side, single side, color. I don't care how you do it, right? You're just going to deliver me prints. My people are going to hit the print button. They're going to walk up to a printer. They're going to slide a card, and their print's going to come out. And how you do it is your problem industry, right? And when you, when you get to that point where suddenly, you know, you just have people on, whether it's a Surface Pro or an iPad or, or an Android tablet, and they're doing their work, and they're web printing to printers that are maintained by someone else, they're accessing applications that are, that are provided as software as a service from someone else, I mean, clearly that doesn't apply to mission applications. If, if you work someplace where you wear a blue badge or half the people in your agency have to qualify with a weapon, right, it, you, there are things you're going to have to own and operate. But when we're talking about the vast majority of commercial agencies, and even DOD, where I was the deputy director of infrastructure, 50% of what you spend on IT is for core infrastructure that's no different in the U.S. government than it is for any small business. And if you were starting a business today and you went to your venture capitalist and said, I'm going to take 10 million of the dollars you're giving me and I'm going to build a data center, you would be thrown out of their office. We have to think like business. We have to operate like a business. All right, Steve, what would your future perfect state be then? So my perfect state would, would mirror much of what Joe has said. The, the, the challenges that we run into are agencies who do not have the kind of vision and leadership that we just heard. We are dealing with customers who are used to operating their little fiefdom, and they know how to write requirements for the things they already have and the way that they've been doing things. And, and so my to-be state would be that somehow agencies would be encouraged to actually follow the FAR, acquisition planning and market research before they start defining requirements and heading purchase requests over to contracts. We would spend more time on FAR Part 7, 10, and 11 with an eye toward the future having more frequent, more open conversations with industry. There is a, there is a practice right now across many of the agencies that says, I can't talk to you. If I talk to you, I have to talk to everybody. And so maybe we need a little more guidance. You mentioned Mythbusters earlier. Maybe we need a little more guidance around what that process looks like. Because in my way of thinking, that's where things go off the rails. And so um, revisiting some of that, I'm, um, I thought maybe the new um, – administrator of Office of Federal Procurement Policy would talk a little more about that. It seems like they're on this track toward category management, getting more intelligence about particular commodity areas, uh, trying to centralize things, but not talking about how the interchange between industry and customers is really happening. How is the government going to know about the latest and greatest if all they are doing is analyzing data that's a year old? All right. And uh, Tony, a lot of what we've heard, you know, cloud computing or getting away from product specification makes it harder for vendors to differ differentiate themselves. And so what does a contractor do in this environment? Because really, few products really are commodities. I mean, there are differences among brands and products and specifications and performances and mean time between failure and all this kind of stuff. So how does that look to a contractor standpoint? And how do you you know, live in a world where everything becomes a commodity well, or is seen that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think to the contrary. I think it provides better opportunity uh, for competition. And through competition, you, you drive innovation. And so if we look to uh, the GAO study, 70% of every IT dollar spent today goes towards supporting legacy systems and infrastructure. Right? That's a huge number of the, the $80 billion uh, estimated being spent on information technology in the federal marketplace. 
So I, I first have to commend Joe for his, his leadership because I think it begins there, moving to these, these new technologies. Um, you know, and, and we see in that future state agencies defining its re- requirements as it relates to their mission need, which, which Joe also uh, highlighted, uh, as, as, did, as did Steve, and then, and then specifying them to leverage the open standards. So they're less prescriptive, there's less brand name, and allowing industry to innovate. So we're investing, companies in the U.S. are investing millions probably billions of dollars into research and development to differentiate and discriminate the products and services we sell in the marketplace. And, and by enabling that and enabling that competition, it's going to in, create jobs and it's also going to help us uh, compete in this global economy for, for the U.S. IT industry. So it's all very positive. All right, that's a good place to uh, take a short break on. Our guests today are Tony Celesti, the Director of Brocade Federal, Joe Piva, the Chief Information Officer at the International Trade Administration, Steve Charles, Co-Founder and Executive Vice President of the IMIX Group, and Joanne Wojtek, the Program Manager for NASA Soup. I'm your moderator, Tom Temin. This is Innovation and Tech Superiority Through Acquisition Reform, sponsored by Brocade here on Federal News Radio 1500 AM and federalnewsradio.com. <laughs> 